Hi, I'm a man, your artist, 07 Eagle Eye, known as uh, AKA Camera Ninja. This time I, I'm on investigations. Well, I've been doing investigations and freelance investigations, usually um, for um, situations I am firsthand involved in. For this past month, um, I've been involved in a story um, that's very unusual and it's uh, very interesting. All the evidence and information being put into this it's it's like this the it's outrageous. I've never really seen a story like this before. Um, we're gonna talk more about it. I basically I'm an advocate for women empowerment and for people that you know what I mean that's getting abused in the system or don't have a voice or can't fight for themselves. Like I feel like that's something I can do to give back to the community. So we're about to enter into an, a pretty deep investigation with um with some uh, people that claims that they are opening a club or a venue or something in the Richmond area. And we are going to find out if that venue or that club really exists or not. That is the one part of this that we want to get out. And the other part is we want to know why. Why would someone go do that much trouble and spend money and gas and many hours to convince hundreds of people that they are um something that don't even add up to be what they say they are so stay tuned there we have a lot of information coming so um let's get this investigation started just a brief update like basically a couple of months ago i was downtown richmond at a club and i had some people talk to me about um a potential underground underworld club opening probably in some really cool club and it's supposed to be a secret at the time my friend I, we wasn't really talking but um later a couple weeks after that like we wound up meeting up and says he had a some stuff to tell me but she didn't want to break all the news but finally it all came out and she went wanted to tell me everything apparently there was this club opening and somewhere in richmond and they was going to take on big bands like rob zombie and in this moment and all these big wigs and she was like oh we ought to go work there and she wanted me to bring my cameras and she wanted other people that i knew plus i heard this same thing from other people before i even talked to her and she didn't know i talked to those people so that's why i know that she's not making this stuff up but then we started hanging out and then i started watching videos and i started um basically looking deeper and deeper into this thing um and it started it looked really real it looks legit like a lot of bands got got involved a lot of people got involved bands that i've actually videoed through camera ninja productions um everyone there's dates and all this stuff and whoever this person is and they changed the story and apparently there's people in other states like maryland and they've done the same thing with and no one's never seen this venue and it's a lot guys okay guys so this is the person in question and this is his real name and his previous account. Okay, so guys, my friend got a, a message, a voice message from a reliable um, mutual friend of ours. And I listened to this voice message. And this person, I'm not calling their names, but um, very liable. Like, I worked with them on stage, um, basically called up or left a voicemail saying that, uh... Okay. I have been hearing, uh, a bunch of stuff, um, recently. Um, I didn't say anything until I heard more from different people. But I'm hearing things about this guy, William, the, the person that is running this, uh, event, um, that you're dealing with. Um, and... I know I've been concerned with some of the vagueness, even in the video, and when I asked you questions, and obviously there you couldn't give me answers, um, that you, you're still trying to get answers, but I, I've been hearing a lot of kind of sketchy things about saying that this guy a year ago already had this club open, but this club's not open, um, and doesn't have an ABC license, or the lease is still up. There, there is no, it's still for lease, the building. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of confused what's going on here. And so basically, I guess in a nutshell, I just need to try to find out as soon as possible if all this is really going to happen and if all this is really legit. And there needs to be, I just need to have something in writing protecting my other group. People, 
there's word through the grapevine that um, a lot of this stuff is like not adding up about him owning a club in Richmond and being able to pull off a venue and all this stuff. Josh or William, either one works. But uh, I run the club, uh, The Kiss of Dawn, and we are having a show the 11th of November. Um, I know... Fucked ourselves over by doing that, but we are open from 2 p.m. to 4 a.m. Oh, I didn't know you were... Um, we've got a lot of um, DJs doing sets right now, so... Um, we do know that it's a successful space. Um, we do know that people will have parking, which is unheard of, I know, for venues. We have, uh, we have 8,800 parking spaces, I believe. So definitely, uh, definitely enough parking. Um, so what he said was, is that um, a friend of his came to him and said this. William basically said that he already had a club up and running, full staff, 150 staff, um, interior finished. They actually had a couple of shows there. And after further investigations, there no, there's no proof of this venue. Um, the building, we actually been to it, is very empty. We already talked to the um, real estate agents or the people in the holder of it, and they said no one's got the building or no one's actually using the building right now. It's just a basically empty warehouse. I would love that. Um. So, anyways, so you said it is currently available, and what is the actual address for it again? Um, you know, I don't know that I actually use an address on it. Um, it's the project's called Spring Rock Green. Okay. All right, I wrote that down. Okay, um, and what uh, you know, the you know the building that you're referring to, you know, first and second floor is about sixty five thousand square feet, and it's still available. Nobody's leaving. It is still available. Yeah. Okay. All right. <sighs> All right. That was a big question. All right. We do have the uh, we do have the upstairs VIP is going to be that's all balcony space so if you would like to set up up there um i guess not a lot has been discussed uh on here about it but uh i apologize for that i've been very very busy um we have currently uh 39,000 square feet um it is uh two floors um before i guess before they knocked out the second floor it was two sets of 34,000 square feet, but total they don't do vertical, so. Um, but we do have the space for, technically we have the space for 10,000, um, but zoning requirements, they'd like for us to only have 8,300 yeah, uh, outside of our staff. Yeah, for the max capacity. Um, also, uh, at the bar, um, we um, do. November is coming quick. Don't believe anybody. You can see pretty far back, but there's nothing in there. The saw. Um, I want to know why is this person going out of their way to say that they actually own a club that don't exist? So um, I'm about to introduce my friend that um actually been in in contact with this William or this Josh Hall person um that's been basically dealing firsthand with all these issues and been in a lot of meetings with him in in person. So um let's get this ball rolling. How are you doing, Willow? Well, much better now that a lot of these things have come to light even though I still haven't gotten to get it out in the open because a lot of people didn't want to stick their neck out there and publicly put this out. But I feel like it's my responsibility to do so, and my friend here has offered to help me do so because he's been involved in this situation, yep. as well as other things similar to this. And I want to break down the story as simply and as factual as possible. So from the start, uh, 
I contacted this person about other social circles, and we went out, um, and then he started telling me about this venue that he was opening, and I actually do booking and promotion, and I've worked with a lot of people. He name-dropped a lot of people that I've worked with or that I know. He said that he already has the staff, that he is training people that he is hiring from high schools and other places, but he also mentioned burlesque. I don't know how high schoolers can work those days, but I assume, okay, they're different nights. Um, he offered me a job with a very high paying salary and I'm in a predicament right now where I'm in between jobs trying to close in on one and everybody knows I've been applying a lot of places. So I was like, perfect. This is as a booking agent and event coordinator this is exactly what I'd like to do. So I've been trying to work with them, but everything's been running around. So the first day he picked me up, we talked about that stuff. So the second day he hadn't offered me the job yet, but the next time he did offer me the job, and he told me that he worked with, in this moment, other bands that I have promoted with and look up to. And then afterwards, he mentioned that he knew some people that I knew that also run promotions in another state nearby, not in Virginia. And so when I found out from them that they had heard about this club, I was like, okay, they're more credible. I guess this is a great thing. Wow, I can't believe I'm doing my going to have my dream job. So at this point... I'm like, okay, can I do a set a show for like two and a half, three months away from now? And I picked the date and I actually have been working with him back and forth and these other artists and bands and have a lot of credible acts that were scheduled for an event. Um, so we have been working on about that. And around the whole time I've been getting the runaround, I was told that they already had, they had, they couldn't have me there yet because ABC was licensed, was getting worked out. I have done research and I have photos of the ABC stuff or an active ABC license for any time coming up or in the past. This guy's already apparently been around talking about already having a club with quite a few people, but everything's been very secretive and very weird. Um, the next time we went out, um, we went to Taco Bell and Guitar Center, and that was when he asked me that stuff. The next time, he said he was going to take me to the building. So he, I got dressed up. He picked me up. Uh, I think I introduced him to my family. And then we drove to Spirit because he had offered to help me get a job at Spirit. And that didn't come through. And I kept asking why that didn't come through. So he took me by Spirit and said that he wasn't working for Spirit anymore. But he introduced me to his friend that supposedly also is going to work at this club and that works at Spirit. So I talked to them. And then he was like, we have zoning and, and um, inspectors working on the building for the club, but I'm going to take you around to it so you can see where the building is. So he drove me around the building and talked to me, but he did not take me to where I could see in the windows. Did he never let you go, go into the building itself? No, not at all. And that was after a few weeks of talking to him and meeting up with him. That was probably the third time. I, that was the third time I met up with him. The next time he was said that, sorry, he couldn't get in touch with me as much because they were busy doing a photo shoot. Then the next day was like, we finished the photo shoot. We also have a logo. We also have all the other stuff's being worked out. The zoning still being worked out though. And we're training staff. So we're going to work out a day for you to come by. So I said, I was like, I really need that day because people are trying to get their tour stuff straight. These bands are, you know, need to get their schedules together. And, you know, we're riding on this. I need to know like how serious this is and what's going on. And I haven't seen the building yet. Well, he said, well, you just need to tell people you already seen it. And and let them roll with it, and I'll handle it or tell them to hit me up. Well, I'm not going to do that because I represent those bands before and foremost anything else. So at that point, I asked him to pick me up and take me by the place again. He wound up taking me to Uno's where he didn't have any money, and I paid the tab, which was also thought was weird for a club owner. He pulled out... um his computer and was be at Uno's and was supposed to be giving me pictures of the venue, contract for employment, map of the venue, and information for the event. We sat there for several hours and talked about things. I got really excited and comfortable. When I got home, the, those pictures and those files had not been sent to my email, so I contacted him. I stayed up till 3 a.m. while he said he was converting files to a different file type so that he could send them to me. Then he said his connection was bad. So I said, how about you come over tomorrow and we do that on my computer and then we also go by the place and we settle all of this and I'll sign the contracts and everything. He said, yeah, sure, no problem. So he said 5 o'clock. It wound up being much later than that. Actually, you were yeah, supposed to go I with me. Yeah, and all this stuff I did. And you had to go to Ashland stuff. or yeah, something. Yeah, I had other stuff to do, but... Yeah. So when this happened, we were supposed to take pictures of the venue later that week for him. 
He said in we're case they needed Wednesday. more picture. Yeah, Wednesday. And Wednesday came and something else happened. But when he came over to, we went to Cece's Pizza after he told me at Uno he was going to take me out for sushi. He took me to Cece's Pizza. It was no big deal, whatever. So we ate some pizza. And then he didn't drive me to the club. He was on the phone with somebody supposedly for the zoning and drove all the way back to my house, came to my house, sat on his computer again with my SD card. And that is, part of that is in the video that is live in a closed group that is for that event where a bunch of people that know about this have been so involved. So you said he came to it. your house, he's... And he, when he went live, he went live and told everybody about the event, about the venue, about the status, about how they've had events already. Yep, I've seen that video, yep. And in that and video is when he was supposedly sending me pictures. When he left, because I, my friend was on the way, you were on the way, yeah. and he said he had to run and meet his other friend, which was the person from Spirit that I had met. When he ran to do that, I checked on the computer. There was only two pictures. Yeah, he was like, well, we're, we're taking going pictures. Your friends are coming. Right. So everything's going to be okay. And I already went live, so don't worry. We already got the works. And I went and took a picture of the map from his computer and told me, don't show this one side because that's prices. They don't need to see that. So I took a picture and posted that screenshot wow. on his computer. So when that happened, I was so excited when my friend came up. He was already mad. He didn't think the place was real. So you. And I showed you the pictures. And then you were like, yeah, did you ch double check the man? Maybe this guy is real. And he's watching those videos. Then as he's doing that, I still am kind of feeling kind of weird for whatever reason, even though well, I still like, want to believe. You Google those pictures. I Google those image pictures and got a place in Seattle and another place somewhere else, and I have that information as well here. So those pictures are not real. This dude just. So eventually, after I got the phone calls from our mutual friend who already went by the place, took pictures of the place, called the other ABC, I went and I did that because I started being threatened by them, and they still were claiming they were going to take me. Never showed up. It was like late in the night. They started saying weird things, saying that I was out of character, and I was like, no, this is really strange situation, and I need to understand what's going on. So at this point, I went there. I had my friend pick me up and took me by that place. I did not go inside the place. I even called the lease place first, talked to the broker. The broker lady said the place was still for lease. I went there, video, and I have these videos, through the, the window of the door just to see. It's an empty warehouse with, like, a saw laying on the ground and a bunch of beams. And it's retailed for office space, and there's another space upstairs. So, retail and office. So, my question is, what's, what is going on? Like, who is this guy? And, like, and now they're threatening me. Who is all me. the people? And I have people from out of state hitting me. Now on Facebook. Right. Like, don't he have a group of people, like, backing him up? Yeah, but none of these people stuff? have supposedly seen this place either, except his girlfriend. He has a girlfriend that has seen this place and been in it, even though I gave this proof. She was like, please send me proof. I gave her all my proof, and I said, look, I'm not trying to ruin anyone's career or hurt anyone, but what's going on here? Is and then she was like, that? she said, we have, we are done here. And after I gave her my proof, she didn't give me her proof. I don't have any records of that they work at this place or own this place or that there's any real employees except for a guy from West Virginia hit me up and saying that I was banned from a club that I don't know exists that, that says that I was trying to get with him, which I don't even know him, and that he is head of security. So other than that, there is no viable proof. Our other friend from Baltimore, who still supposedly believes the story, which, and I know you're probably hearing this, but she met up with him, came all the way here to meet up with him, not saying names, because I'm not like that, and I wanted to be friends, but you guys are being sneaky, but came all the way over here, met with him, and again, he took her around, didn't introduce her to anybody else, yeah, and did not take thing. her to the club. Well, that's a pattern. Like, and why it's a pattern of lies. girls and driving them around talking about a club and a venue that's open and so all So I have stuff. the leasing company and the broker telling me that this place is still for lease and empty. I have video and pictures of the place being empty. I have rumors of people saying that for over a year he's been talking about shows. He also said he had Lama God booked for this weekend, but the hurricane canceled it, and they... He, he was on the phone with, with him Lamb all, that's why he didn't meet with us, because he was on the phone the whole day, he had another meeting yesterday, or the day before it was supposed to have with him in person, so that they can play October 12th here at this empty lot. And then, so I finally, after they're threatening me, telling me not to go public, and I shouldn't be on Facebook, and, and I shouldn't ask for help, that that's wrong. I'm like, dude, this is very weird, and this is like holding up stuff in my life. Why do I care? Because, dude, I relied on the There's idea of, of this job and these bands. Because you're a promoter. Okay, guys, this is the deal. All right, this is how we're going to crush this, these people. That's the reason why I was like, we're going to... I lie. have proof. All right. All right. Every single thing... They that, won't show proof. Everything's hearsay. And everyone's of, trying to gang up because they're afraid 
because the guy sounds legit. But I looked into his past. He's a LARPer, which means he's a live action role player. But this is unacceptable. If you have a club, there's no reason to lie about its status. And there's no reason to start a show <coughs> before it's time. You could just tell people the truth. There's no reason to lie about knowing people and that are famous that you don't know and talking about shows you're not going to have. And there's no reason in promising people that need jobs, jobs that you cannot provide. And you will be called out and you will be proven. And if you want to prove your story, all you have to do is give proof. And I'll say, I'm sorry, but even if you have something going on, everything you have said up until now has been a complete and utter lie. And there is nothing to say to back up that it is okay to make a complete and utter fraud and lie to anyone. And there is no threatening me and trying to scare me and my people out of calling you out. So if you want to come at me, now it's public record. Yeah. I was going to say thank you, Willow, and uh, everyone else that have been involved in this investigation. Um, if anyone have any information or any further information on this uh, William or this Josh Hall, um, um, contact me. Don't contact Willow. Contact me or contact 07 Eagle Eye. I have a page out there. This is not an act of slander but a display of uh, factual evidence with the intent to warn people of this uh, um, alleged elaborate scam. We don't want anyone else to be uh, a victim or or led down a path of, um, of lies and deception. This is 07 Eagle Eye. Thank you. That's already, I mean, there's no need for another club that's gonna fuck everybody over. That's already been done. It's already been had. There's no need for another club that's gonna fuck everybody over. That's already been done. It's already been had.